All right, we're ready to go. Good morning, everybody. My name is Sean Snover. I have a YouTube channel. It's called Real Northern Bass. We're uh, obviously on YouTube. We're on all other social media. I find myself here surprisingly today because we've apparently figured out a way to do pretty good at this, but also figured out a way to communicate that people can understand. We've helped a lot of people learn a lot of different things about fishing up here in New England and the Northeast in general, because it, it's definitely different fishing than from down south. One of the things we've really focused on the last few years is what we've been able to do with really cold water fishing. A lot of people rely on things like blade baits and jerk baits, hair jigs, and those are all phenomenal baits. They work really, really well. Early on, I struggled with my confidence with them, but we did figure out some really, really good things over the years just working regular jigs. And a jig is my do or die bait. I'm gonna have this tied on from ice out to ice in, and I will catch fish from ice out to ice in. And a lot of it just comes down to obviously confidence, which is key for anything, but also cadence is the single most important thing. So that's one of the things I'm gonna cover the most when we're talking about cold water jig fishing. But first and foremost, let's cover kind of different bodies of water because we're gonna tackle places a little bit differently if we're talking your typical New England kettle pond, something kind of smaller, maybe 200 acres, average depth around 200, um, you know, 12 feet, 10 feet, but has a variety of structure too. And then your more typical bigger lake glacial ponds, right? Which are glacial lakes, which can get up to 150 plus feet deep. And you'll have much steeper, longer lasting uh, submerged points, rock piles, the whole nine yards. From there, I also want to talk about different head types, but I will tell you right now, 99% of what we are doing when we're talking cold water jig fishing, is a football head jig and almost exclusively a half ounce. The only time we're going to deviate from that is going to be depending upon what the fish tell us. 99% of the time we can get away with a half ounce football jig. It works great. If you're fishing shallow, it's fine. If you're fishing 50 feet of water, it will take a little while to get down there, but it's going to get down there and it will stay on the bottom for you when you're moving it really, really slow. Sometimes we go out, fish just don't want to bite it. We'll back off to three eighths. Doesn't seem like it makes sense, right? You'll have a half ounce jig down the bottom, not touch it for 20 seconds, and the fish will start biting. Go out the next weekend, doing the same thing in the same conditions. They're not biting. You switch to a three eighths. That's the key difference. Doesn't make any sense. It's already on the bottom, but there's something about it that just works for them. Let's talk about cadence a little bit first, because I'm up here on the tank, and if I talk about everything else, I'm not going to do anything with the water. Cadence is, without a shadow of a doubt, the single most important thing when it comes to cold water jig fishing. Everything we do is on the bottom. I'm never lifting this bait up off the bottom. It's going to stay down there. It's just a matter of how quickly or slowly we're going to move it, how often, how long our pauses are, and then a lot of it after that comes down to color selection. But in this case, we're talking cold water jig fishing. I'm going to talk 45 degrees and colder. 45 down, really 45 to 40, is where a lot of this applies. Getting down below 40, you can still apply, but that, that's a different kind of ammo. 36 degree water is not friendly to anybody. And when you get up over 45, it, it becomes a lot easier. You can fish a lot faster, especially in the spring. Those fish wake up fast and they get active. In the winter, it just continuously slows down. I pitched this in, what, 10, 15 seconds ago? This is winter fishing. You're gonna go real, real slow when you're in 45 degree water. We're gonna wait sometimes even 30 seconds to a minute on really slow days where we're not gonna touch it. And the fish are gonna be down there, they're just gonna be honed in on it, and they're gonna wait for something. Specific to cadence, when we're moving the bait, generally, I'm gonna cast, I'm gonna go sideways, although I kinda can't do it with this because I don't have a whole lot of room up here. When we're fishing deep, I will go sideways and I'm just gonna side sweep. I wanna keep the rod tip low, so that way I know when I'm dragging it, I'm trying to minimize how much vertical lift I'm putting on the rod. I want to keep the bait on the bottom. And a typical movement, if I can do this without slapping the rod up on this cable, and I really hope everybody could see that. It was minimal, it's subtle, I'm not doing much, but that's it. That, without, I would say covers probably 80% of the fishing that we do at this time of the year. And we're still out there right now. I was in my bass boat right here in Massachusetts just this past weekend fishing open water. I don't mind ice fishing, but I prefer to be in my boat whenever I can. And this is a lot of what we'll do. 
there are days where, and you gotta just kind of listen to the fish on this, everybody does it, you have in mind a cadence that you wanna do. And in this case, we'll say 20 seconds on the bottom. You're not gonna touch it. After it hits bottom, count it down, 15, 20 seconds. And then you're gonna move it a foot to a foot, keeping it on the bottom, and that movement is gonna be so slow and exaggerated, it might take you five seconds to be able to move it that full one to two feet. And then from there we'll vary it up, then we'll go to a six inch move. Still at that same slow pace. And that's kind of a good cadence to start with, you know, 20, 30 seconds on the bottom before you touch it. One to two foot movements max over about five seconds. And we'll start to work in different cadences. All right, they're not biting on that. I will always default to speeding up first. And if that doesn't work, then I'll continue to slow down because most of us are just too impatient and we don't want to wait. And I am already hung up and that's okay. You're going to do a lot of that in the winter. Mm. I could go on and on talking about cadence in different conditions, but then I'd be talking about very specific conditions. And that is important, but that's the only way you're going to learn that is really through a time on water. But going off of that essential 20 to 30 seconds on the initial drop, letting your jig sit down on the bottom and do nothing and then start to move it backwards from there. You wanna move, again, one to two feet max over about five seconds. Sometimes I will not do that. I'll drag and every once in a while I will just kind of bounce the rod. So it looks like I'm hopping it up top, but down the bottom, it's just kind of popping along the rocks. You're trying to imitate the very, very slow, lethargic bait that lived down there during the winter. You're trying to keep it natural to that. And that works great. Enough on cadence. Let's talk baits. There's a number of baits that we rely on heavily. Beast Coast Fishing is our number one go-to. They make a variety of different football jigs. They're all tungsten for the most part. They have their Maxfield football jig, which is tungsten. They have their open water sniper, which is a shorter cut on the skirt and a smaller hook. So you can put smaller baits on there without tearing them up. Those are phenomenal. They make those in quarter, three eighths and half ounce. Then they have their newest addition, the baby dozer, which is also a tungsten head that's a five eighths ounce, which is really helpful for when we we're fishing, say 45, 50 feet of water, both smallmouth and largemouth. This time of the year, colder water, Darker colors tend to be your best friend. We've had more days on a, where our best success has come from pure black. No flake in it, nothing. Just a black skirt and a black trailer. And that could be anything from, say, the SS Chunk, which Somatis Bait sells. And that's kind of along the same lines as the Zoom Super Chunk Junior. You know, something that looks like a crawfish in the appendages, but really has just dead action. So you get the profile, without it looking overly active, like you would get, say, from a Striking Rage Crop or the Flippin' Delight from Beast Coast Fishing. Those appendages still stand out, but when they fall, they're violent, and it doesn't really match with the cadence that you would find in what you're targeting or what the fish are trying to eat at this time of the year with that colder water. So really dark colors um, tend to be the best that we're dealing with. So a lot of black, black and blue, dark browns with black mixed in, and on occasion, a really dark green pumpkin works really, really well too. A lot of it depends on what you have available for forage. If you're in a body water that has a ton of perch, black and green pumpkin are our two favorite colors. Green pumpkin kind of matches a lot of the bait fish that you're working with down there. And it matches, to an extent, some micro perch. Because they really don't have that much pattern to them. And then black kind of matches a lot of the bait that all of it, everything is up there chasing. Helgramite comes to mind. That's just a little black, weird looking thing. And all the perch move up and they feed on that. And then the bass in turn come up and feed on the perch. So those two colors work really, really well. Anything in between. So I've got pure black and then I've got one that's pure green pumpkin, but it's a very dark green pumpkin, not to be confused with a watermelon, which is kind of a more vibrant, clearer green. So I like to use dark, dark green pumpkin for that. Trailers. One of the things I've shown here, if I can do this again, there's something really special about a swim bait on the back of a jig this late in the year. 
We will use a bunch of different things. Mega Bass Spark Shads come to mind. They're, they're phenomenal. That's what I happen to have tied on right now on the back of a Beast Coast Baby Dozer Jig. From there, Kitex 2.8 and 3.3. The majority of the baits that we're throwing on this, we're keeping small. It's rare that we use a full-size football jig with a full-size traditional cut skirt and a four-inch or bigger trailer. Everything that we're doing is micro, and it works for everybody, from anything from the you know, five-pound smallmouth we catch, we've got a couple of six-pound largemouth, all in sub-45 degree water, even down to days where you catch nothing but 12-inch bass. doesn't matter. We've found definitely outliers. Everything has outliers, but the vast majority of the time, we're getting away with 3.3 inch or to two and a half inch in trailer sizes. Then there's the jig itself, aside from the fact I did bring up a lot of football head action because I want that bait to stand. I want it to present itself. They're not moving a lot. They're going to see it and they're going to take their time. But if you're working with something other than perfectly sandy, hard packed bottom, they're not going to be able to see that unless it wants to stand and you have a bait that wants to protrude and it makes it easier for them to key in on it. They followed it down, now they can see where it went. But again, I like the dead action. So this is another Beast Coast fit, uh, jig and it has the Somatis Baits SS chunk on it. There's two different ways you can rig this. I am not traditional. I rig it like any other jig trailer and I know a lot of people hate me for it, but it works for me and confidence is key. Something like this is phenomenal. It's really, really small dead action and it gets their attention they can kind of key in on it but if i were in you know you get plenty of ponds where it's got just a smidgen of that soft vegetation about an inch along the bottom and having that football head allowing that bait to stand up and present itself makes things a lot easier for that fish to hone in on it and make a decision on what they want to do The only other thing I guess I haven't covered, and again, I could, I could be up here for an hour just talking about cadence. Cadence alone and the different ways we play with it, but a lot of that's going to come down to time on the water, and I cannot stress that enough. you got to find gear that you can be comfortable in and that you can be safe in. So when you're doing 45-degree water, that, that's dangerous, and that'll it's just dangerous. Be safe when you're out fishing this time of the year. But gear, it depends on what you're comfortable with, but the thing we found... Just a jig rod, straight 15 pound fluorocarbon. And especially this time of the year where you're fishing in below freezing air temps, you will get ice build up in your guides. And if you're fishing braid that isn't like brand new and still has that waxy coating on the outside, your braid's gonna wanna freeze up a little bit too. And that, that's really difficult to deal with when trying to cast, even on a spinning rod. But especially on a casting rod, you're dealing with your leader knot even if you tie like a really good fg leader knot which is nice and long and low profile you're still going to run into issues with the ice build up on your guides and it, it will absolutely hinder your ability to make good casts your knot can get caught up on the way in on the way out there's a couple ways to go around that but we've found i mean i i have three of my four jig rods with me even right now we're fishing the dead of winter all the water we're fishing is below 40 degrees i'm still throwing straight 15 pound fluorocarbon on my go-to jig rod. They're all 8.2 or 8.3 to one gear ratio, high speed retrieve. I still want to pick up a lot of slack. I'm fishing rods that are, these lose custom pro speed sticks, or the custom speed sticks, sorry. It's about $150 rod. Medium heavy fast. This one sits kind of in between a medium heavy and a heavy, so I like that. It's still supple that I can bomb probably 150 to 200 feet on my best days, a three eight ounce jig which is really key when you're fishing this you know, water from 40 to 60 feet deep. Get it out there far so you have plenty of water to work your way back on. But there's enough backbone on this that even at the end of that cast, I can still bury the hook on any size fish and it's rare that we will lose them. So it just simplifies things. If you can go lighter in line, by all means, do it. It's gonna be helpful more in the long run, but there has yet to be a day that even when we're targeting smallmouth in some of the clearest lakes you've ever seen in both Vermont, New Hampshire, and even down in Cape Cod, Massachusetts, where I got outfished by someone fishing straight 10 pound versus me fishing straight 15 pound. The line has very, very rarely mattered in the vast majority of our applications. That's more like a summer thing in the winter. They just don't care. They're so honed in on that bait, trying to decide if they want to bite or not. It just doesn't seem to matter. So. 
For reels, we use a bit of everything. We have quite a few of the Luz Hypermag reels. They're phenomenal. They're 8.2 to ones. We have their custom lights, which I believe are actually 75 to one. And their Custom Pro Gen 2, which is another 8.3 to one. I like high speed retrieve ratio because I'm dealing with such long casts and such deep water. And even in cold water, you will have smallmouth come up and bite it and run at you. The speed at which they run at you is going to differ very, very much from the way they do in the summer to the winter, but there are days they'll still bite it and run right at you. And having that high speed retrieve, be able to pick up that slack and set the hook home, it makes a big difference. But hopefully I was able to teach you guys something about whatever I did 20 minutes or so up here about cold water jig fishing. To reiterate, by far the most important thing is cadence. Start slow, work slower. I have my favorite saying every adult when I was a kid taught me that it still stuck with me to this day. The moment you think you're fishing slow enough, go slower. And more often than not, that is going to be the key difference in what gets you not only just success in general for the day, but also the quality of fish goes up dramatically when you slow down. So I hope that helps. Again, I, you know what, I'll say it one more time for the cadence. Anywhere from 10 to 30 seconds on the initial drop, don't touch it. Let it sit there and wait. It's a great time to have random conversations with your buddy if you're out there with somebody. And then slow movements. One to two feet max, about five seconds across that movement. So you're going real slow. You can add a little shimmy to it if you want. Vast majority of the time, keeping the bait on the bottom is what works for us. And hopefully, you guys find some value in that and find success out there this winter. But for everybody that came out to watch, thank you very much. We appreciate you. If you're looking for any of this gear, Ben's Tackle Shack has a ton of it. If you're looking for jigs, Beast Coast Fishing is in the other room. They have tons and tons of jigs. We've got Somatis here. He's got some of those SS chunks on hand. There's plenty of other vendors that sell a lot of great stuff that's all great. If you guys see us, we'll be in the Ben's Tackle booth the rest of the day. Myself here until 2. Andrew, the other half of Real Northern Bass, is here. He'll be here all day. You can ask him any questions. He's happy to help. Thank you all.